Yeah, I mean, it's all through this whole thing. I don't know it's a sports program, mate, but it's just dominated discussion for everyone for the last seven days. And everyone has spoken about every predicament and mainly is what would you do if you were there? And, you know, and we just talk about it. Everyone just talks about it until they can't talk anymore. And daily we get all these stories of survival. We get the stories constantly of the death. And, you know, and, and for Melbourne to release that tonight, it's... I don't know, it, just, it brings it closer to home, it really does, and, um, you know, Troy Broadbridge, I, I can remember speaking to Danny Corker and not so long ago, he used to be the football manager now, head of the Athletics Association, and, and Danny was talking Troy, Bro Boy, Troy Broadbridge up to me about, you know, he's ready to ready to take a position in the back line there, 40 games, once he recruited in 99, so it's probably taken him five years and 40 games and development and you know, he just thought he was just ready to take a next step and really cement his position so yeah it's just it's not good is it well as you said it has been difficult to comprehend uh, the human tragedy that we have uh, witnessed over the last week and one man who uh, would obviously uh, be very much struggling to comprehend what um, what has uh, what has occurred, particularly, uh, of course, with Troy Broadbridge is the president of the Melbourne Football Club, the club chairman, Paul Gardner, and he has been uh, kind enough to give us a few minutes tonight on this very very sad evening for the Melbourne Football Club. Good evening, Paul. We do wish we were speaking to you in far better circumstances. As do I. Yeah. Hi. Um, when did uh, when did the club get word from Troy's family that um, uh, that his death had been confirmed? Um, about six o'clock, uh, we were alerted that there, um, that his father had uh, identified a body um, as as Troy's, and uh, I guess when you're you know over six foot with red hair, you'd think it'd be quite easy. But as you can imagine. Um, over uh, the past week it's been quite difficult but he's, he's identified him through his wedding ring and uh, various other accompaniments such as his passport and that so we found out a little while ago and um, we've done as we've tried to all the way along and release this statement and uh, that's where we're at. Paul, it's Mark Robinson here mate. What does the club do now? What do you do as president? Um, the players, how do, you, how do you deal with this? Well Mark, I guess there's nothing really prepares you for something like this. It's um, it's devastating for the club, but I guess you look at it and say, well, it's just, it's, you know, however we feel about it, it's far more devastating for a, a parent or a brother or a sister and um, and a friend than it is for a bloody football club. And uh, all we can do is, is, is take stock and, and say, well, it's happened now, and um, if there's any good to come out of I guess it hasn't prolonged the agony for the family. Um, and there, there is a body, and... Uh, we, we'll gather again tomorrow. Uh, we gathered last night. We had a, some brief counselling. I'm, I'm actually down the beach at the moment, so we, we, we drove up last night and uh, drive back down today, and I'll drive back up again tomorrow. And uh, just just sit there and say, well, that's that's the way it is, guys. And and uh, how do how do we now comfort the family? How do we comfort Trishri's wife? And um, how do we have a life? What, what does it mean to us as people? And what does it mean to us as individuals? Paul, is that the main thing that the football club can do now? That it, it just all the resources that an AFL football club does have, you can just throw as much support as possible uh, behind Trisha, um, Troy's wife of only a matter of days, and his uh, his parents Wayne and Pam, and the rest of the Broadbridge family. I guess uh, we've had um, a lot of counsellors last night, and um, over the last week we've been talking to the players. And, yeah, you know, footy clubs are a funny beast. Footy clubs are a bit like, um, I guess, like boarding school. You have 44 or 42 guys that are largely testosterone pumped and they, they joke and they gag and they muck around and, you know, you send reports to their parents. They are like sort of 16-year-old schoolboys in many ways. Um, and I think in this case, we have to look at it and say, well, what does that mean to us as a club? How, how would a real club of substance react? And, and, and Melbourne hasn't been a club of substance for a number of years. And, and I'd like to think in 2004 and beyond that we, we started to build this concept that we're going to be a club of substance. We're going to be a club that people sit up and say, that, that's, how, that, that, that's how you lead people rather than just follow people. We're going to, we're going to, we'll, we'll lead in this position. Uh, we'll make sure that Trish is fine. Um, and, and well looked after. We'll make sure the parents have been catered for all the way along, and uh, we will we celebrate his life, and um, we'll certainly look after one of our own as best we can. Paul, the um, when were the players 
toll tonight? No. Uh, I, I found out, uh, I'm actually at a dinner party, and I found out about an hour and a half ago, and uh, we told the coaches who divide up the number of players they rang, and the players would have been would have all been told by now, as were the family. As you said before, three clubs are unique beasts, and yeah, there might be 44 players there and staff and officials, but you know, people always find best friends. Who was who did Troy? Who, who, the situation for Troy and what's happened. Who's that affected the most of the club? You know, particular teammates, Neil, yourself. I mean, you know, how, how deep does it go with some guys? Mark, that's a terrific question. I, I, look, I don't really know. You know, we. In talking to the councillors, um, they talked about, obviously, because he's been there four years, the, the older players, the more senior players be affected in some ways. But in many ways, the younger players are affected as well because they look at it and say, gee, I, I really not, didn't know this guy. Do I feel guilty about not knowing this guy? Do I feel guilty about not feeling sorrow? And, and so, you know, it's a bit like... Um, any person that's suffered a tragedy, as, as many of us have, whether it be a grandparent or a parent or whatever happens, or a friend die in a car accident, it, it affects each person differently. And, and, and the wisdom we've received and the counsel we've received is to just, just let people grieve differently. You can't say, I'm sorry, you have to fit into box A or box B. What you say is, no, look, you, you want to grieve, you grieve. And all we're going to do as a club is just is put a collective arm around you and say, go and grieve. And last night, uh, we had all the players there, and um, I was, uh, despite there are a number of people obviously in, in Troy's wedding party, despite that fact, there's a number of others who are really, really uh, outwardly emotional, and, and what you might say is, geez, that, is that soft, is that un-Australian, is that weak? The, the, the true answer is, no, that's just individual, that's just the way they are. And, all we can do is just say to everybody, be it friends or family or Melbourne supporters or or players, just just react the way you want to react to and, and we'll cater accordingly. For the supporters, uh, Paul, uh, what can I do? Is there going to be a service in Melbourne? Do you know is the funeral going to be in his home state of South Australia or, or has Melbourne got any plans? I know it's early. Have they got any plans to, uh, you know, for a patch of service here in Melbourne? I guess um, you look at it and say, well... Uh, it, it's really become a family matter now. Um, uh, it's between Tricia and the Broadbridge family. I, I, I understand, but I, I can't confirm that there will be um, a burial of sorts in Melbourne. If that's the case, obviously the club will participate in, in some way, shape or form. But it's, it's, it's become really a private matter now. Um, although Troy, because he's a well-known person, and I guess AFL is, it, it, he's still, before he's a footballer, he's a, he's a husband and he's a son and he's a brother. And um, it's up to those people to decide the way we go forward and we will accommodate that accordingly. And Paul, as we, uh, as we let you go, uh, have, have you got a, a favourite memory of Troy Broadbridge that you might be able to share with us? Well, I guess um, my favourite memory of, of, of Troy Broadbridge Broadbridge is not dissimilar to the favourite of any footballer, you know, young footballer. They come into a club and they're hopeful and, uh, and they're looking forward and they're proud to wear the colours and they're proud to have the number and they're proud to sit the locker where some other people have, have treaded beforehand and Melbourne's got a, a great history and a great tradition and I, I just think it's a, it's a terrible tragedy but it, it's a tragedy for us the football club but it's that's nothing you know it's, it's, it's the real tragedies for the family and the real tragedies for all the families around the world who are missing people and have lost people and um that that's the real tragedy it's a tragedy for the world we're a microcosm of that and, and football it's irrelevant you know this isn't about football this is about human life and it's about a terrific young guy who just got married met the love of his life uh, has a fantastic family network and, and look, I'm, I'm very, very upset and, and the club's very upset and all we can do is pray and feel for the family. Paul, we thank you for joining us tonight in these uh, very sad circumstances. OK, cheers. Paul Gardner, the chairman of the Melbourne Football Club and uh, if you have just joined us and uh, just trying to uh, catch up with the news, the Melbourne Football Club has, um, has confirmed that uh, Troy Broadbridge has been um, identified the, his body has been identified by his father in uh, in Phuket in Thailand 
and uh, the Melbourne Football Club at about 20 to 9 this evening released a statement uh, confirming his death. He played 40 games for the Demons, but as uh, as Paul Gardner just said, this um, well, this whole human tragedy over the uh, over the last week, it, um, it it is it's just just it's just so hard to comprehend, Robbo, isn't it? It just is so hard to comprehend the um, the human suffering and that that we that we've seen in the last seven days. Hey, we've had an amazing couple of years, you know. We've had just some major events, um, which you know, 9/11 and 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 now this, it's just sort of shaped out. And uh, yeah, he probably was the face of the victims here in Victoria, but. Uh, yeah, yeah I, don't know. I don't know what to say, to be honest, mate. Uh, that makes two of us. Look, if, if there are any Melbourne supporters out there that uh, that do want to make a comment, uh, we've got Michael from Werribee uh, on the line, and if uh, if anyone else wants to uh, wants to have a chat to us about Troy Broadbridge, uh, 9429 11 16 is the number to ring. Uh, good evening, Michael. G'day, uh, Bruce. How are you going? Uh, not too bad, mate. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm, you know, to be quite honest, I'm not even a Melbourne supporter, but, you know, I... The thing I loved about Troy Broadbridge was wasn't a, it wasn't a particular mark or a goal. It was the fact that you know he had injuries and he just got back up and he fell down and he got up again. Just his resilience to play football was just it was inspiring. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks for that call, Michael. It's um, yeah, it is. A, it's a very sad night here at SEN 1116. We obviously we are a uh, we are a sports station, but. Uh, uh, stories like this transcend sport, and uh, it is difficult to uh, to find the right words. And uh